Another record set down at the border. It's January 29th, 2024, and these are your headlines. Okay, so U.S. Border Protection has finally released numbers for illegal alien encounters at the southern border during December, and you won't believe this. They totaled over 300,000 total encounters, the highest ever recorded in a month. This is nearly 60,000 total encounters, more than during the month of November, during which Border Patrol recorded 242,000 total encounters. Now, this is yet another instance of illegal alien encounters breaking the record for highest number of encounters at the southern border, having just previously done so in September of last year. Now, according to Fox News correspondent Bill Malusian, he says there have now been over 785,000 migrant encounters at the southern border since October 1st, the highest first quarter ever recorded. That's a population size bigger than the city of Seattle coming across the border in just three months. Now, Texas Scorecard reached out to CBP in an attempt to find out why they waited almost an entire month before releasing the numbers. This is part of it as well, is that we are continually getting these numbers from the previous month later and later and later. We've not received a response from them on why that delay has continued to grow. And Friday's report also states that consistent with historical trends and enhanced enforcement, the first two weeks of January saw an over 50% decrease in Southwest border encounters between ports of entry, according to preliminary figures. We'll see if that shakes out when this month's numbers come out in February. But in addition to hundreds of thousands of illegal crossings, Border Patrol arrested 19, 19 individuals that are on the FBI's terrorist watch list in December, bringing the total number of terror watch list suspects arrested at the southern border to 49. Matt Rinaldi, the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, has announced his official endorsement of Donald Trump in the 2024 presidential race. In a post on X today, Rinaldi endorsed Trump and reiterated his support for David Covey, who's challenging House Speaker Dade Phelan in the upcoming primary election. In his announcement, he also called on Texas GOP Vice Chair Dana Myers, who you might remember announced last week that she would challenge Rinaldi for the chairmanship, he challenged her to do the same. He said, while party officials should remain neutral in primaries, absent extraordinary circumstances, the threat our nation faces from the Democrats, globalists, and fake Republicans that hand power to Democrats is truly extraordinary. We need everyone in this fight. And the Republican Party of Texas passed a resolution in September calling on Phelan to resign as speaker, citing the failed impeachment of Attorney General Ken Paxton, as well as his support for placing Democrats in leadership positions. As of right now, as we're recording this, Vice Chair Myers has not responded to a request for comment. Now, the vote for the next chair of the Republican Party of Texas will happen during their biennial convention, which takes place May 23rd through 25th in San Antonio. And of course, that Republican primary election is coming up on March 5th. If you're not watching The Luke Messias Show, then you are not as engaged as everybody else is in Texas who's trying to make a difference, knowing exactly what's going on so that they can take action on the things that really matter. Guys, watch us on the Roku app for Texas Scorecard. Watch us on YouTube. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Get engaged, get more informed, so together we can actually make a bigger difference on things that matter for the future of Texas. God bless you. Last up, a school principal is on video in her office urging voters to support a state lawmaker for re-election. The problem? Well, that could be a violation of state law. State Representative Glenn Rogers, who's facing a tough re-election battle, promoted a video by the principal of Breckenridge Junior High School principal Laura Gibson on his campaign Facebook page. In the video, Gibson encourages viewers to vote for Rogers in the Republican primary the Republican primary, not the general election because he doesn't have a Democrat opponent, she says, but vote for him in the Republican primary because of his opposition to school choice. She said, let's cast our votes on March 5th to send Glenn back to Austin so he can continue to fight not only for our teachers and our schools, but most importantly, for our students. Now, the video appears to have been taken in Gibson's office, which could be a violation of state law. The Texas Election Code specifically prohibits public employees from using public resources to electioneer. It's not clear whether the video was filmed during school hours, but the Rogers campaign deleted the video and they replaced it with another one of, uh, of Gibson reciting the same speech 
but this time with a different backdrop at a different location. Now, the attorney general's office has emphasized electioneering in schools in recent elections, encouraging those who see potential violations to report them to their office. Texas scorecard recently caught Rogers, of course, touting fake endorsements from elected officials who didn't support his campaign. He was also on the receiving end of the only campaign contribution recorded by disgraced former Speaker Joe Strauss's PAC last year. And you guessed it, as of our story today, Rogers and Gibson did not respond to a request for comment. You can check out more details at texasscorecard.com.